Hi and welcome back to Divine Lee Design Studio. For those that don't know, my name's Nicole Reed, and today we're at hack number three for the Shabby Fabrics accordion pouch. So this one is the one that we're making today. And as you can see from the original, it's slightly bigger. So we have enlarged this and we are going to show you how to do that just through um, your printer program. So we open it up in Adobe and then we print it out through that and I'll show you how to do that and then to join the templates. So today I'm going to be teaching you how to insert a magnetic snap for the closure, how to put a zip in for a pocket and also how to place these rivets in. So let's get started. Okay, so today we're making a larger accordion pouch and we're going to be installing some bag hardware into it. So you're going to need an 18 millimeter slim line if you can or just a regular magnetic snap. You're going to need a uh, 8 inch or bigger zip, we can always cut that down. You're also going to need some double, -ended, double capped um, rivets okay so I'll show you how to put them in so they have a cap on either side you're also going to need your ultimate glue you're going to need some fabric scissors uh, you're going to need a tailor's awl or a leather uh, hole punch and you're also going to need some marking devices some wonder clips matching thread for your fabric and you're also going to need some quilting rulers you're going to need some fusible fleece some shape flex 101 a little scrap piece of Peltex and of course you're going to need your exterior and your lining fabrics. You're also going to need to print off your template pieces a little bit different than we did last time. This time we're enlarging them and we're enlarging them up to 130%. And you'll need to do some settings um, on your Adobe Reader for that. We're going to be printing it out on a poster. So that way it will actually spread the size of your template over four sheets. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to head off to the computer. I'm going to show you how to enlarge your template pieces. And then we'll come back here and we'll assemble our template pieces. And then we'll get into making our pouch. Okay, so if you've been following along with the accordion pouch hacks then you would have already downloaded the free pattern to your computer and saved it into your documents now what we're going to do is we're going to open up that file and you can see here it's opened up in Adobe so um, basically what you want to do now is you want to click over here up on the top of your screen there is a file and you click on that and it'll drop down scroll down to print click on that and then you'll have this open up for you. So we'll just come back a little bit for you. There we go. And you can see here that we've got some options. So I'm just going to print in grayscale. I'm just going to print one copy. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to here to the... Um, so if we went to normal size, it'll come up like this. We want to go to poster. And then we want to change our 100% scale tile scale to 130% with an overlap of a 0 0.005 inches okay we want cut marks to be there and we want it to be in portrait so we're ready to go for that and then you just click print and that will then print out for you and then we'll move on to the next step of joining all our templates together Okay, so we've printed everything off and now we've got these four sheets of paper to make our template. So we just need to do a, a couple of little things to it to make sure that it comes together okay. First of all, it's not fat quarter friendly anymore. You're going to need 40 centimetres of your fabric exterior and lining. Also of your Shape Flex 101 and your fusible fleece. So basically all I'm going to do is just quickly cut around this, just roughly. It doesn't have to be perfect at this point this is just so we can get it together and we're just going to get rid of all that rubbish okay so we've got rid of that excess fabric and now you can see here that we've got our four template pieces so basically what we're going to do is we're going to create the shape of it and it ends up looking like this so I'm just going to set that aside for now and I'll show you how to put it all together so on your pieces of paper if you've printed it out through Adobe and you've 
done all the correct things that I've told you to do you will actually get these little crosses on each of your templates you can see them here okay these are our lining up marks Alrighty, so basically what I'm going to do, you can see here it says place on FO and then the LD is over here. So basically what I'm going to do is I am going to trim off a little bit of this one off, off this template here and then I'm going to line up those crosses. So when I trim it off, I want to lay my ruler alongside this line here. So the line that you can see, it's got two lines. So it looks like a... a off center cross so we're going to line it up along that line and you're just going to grab your rotary cutter or your paper cutter any sort of um, cutter that you've got you can use your scissors if you want you can draw a line if you so choose as well and then use your scissors to cut that so I'm just going to trim that off and get rid of that rubbish and then what I'm going to do, you can see here that I've still got that line. You can just make it out on camera and that little one that sticks down. So what I'm going to do is now grab these, the, the one that I'm matching up to, and I'm going to line that line up. So you can see there that this dotted line is continuing on and it's not missing any. And you can see that there's a little cross there. Um, for you to line everything up and it looks like a perfect cross so i know that i'm okay to actually grab my glue stick or um sticky tape whatever that you're going to use and put that in place for me i'm just going to use my glue stick and i'm just going to put it in that quarter inch um allowance there and line that back up again and if I'm using, if I've printed it off correctly to follow my instructions correctly, then this should all line up just nicely. And you shouldn't have any issues. Okay, so that's in place. And I'll bring it up closer to the camera. And you can see there that there's that little cross just there. Okay, so now what we need to do is take our other pieces and we're going to line them up. Again, we're going to have to cut some off because we've got this spot here where we can glue to. So again, I just grab my pieces that I want to trim off and I place the ruler onto the line. As I said, you can use a pen or a pencil to mark, but I'm just going to use my paper rotary cutter and get rid of that. Okay, so I know that this piece here is now going to line up, but you can see that I still have some excess here. So I'll get rid of that as well. Again, just lining up on that little cross mark and get rid of that excess. Then I'm just going to grab my glue pen again and I'm just going to put some glue down. And again, I'm going to, you can see here on the corner, I've just got a little black mark. I'm just going to bring that into that corner there. And again, I'm creating that cross. And you can see there that everything is lining up just nicely. I'll just place that down and the cross still looks like a cross alrighty okay so now I've got this one here so I can lift this corner up a little bit and I can place that under there but again I have to trim some off so I'm only trimming on the one side this time lining up my ruler again grabbing my cutter and just getting rid of that excess and that gets rid of that so this time I can put a little bit of glue here. I'm not cutting anything off this one on this side because that's going to slip under that piece that's already there. And I'm going to put a little bit of glue here. And then I'm just going to lift that up and then line everything up. So you can see there that the lines are all marked out pretty good. And there we go. All right, so that's all lined up. So what you want to be looking at is this cross here is all lining up. So when you look at it, it actually looks like a cross. 
okay and now what I, I generally do is I'll just write a little bit about it so it's got here place on the fold but that's actually going to get cut off when we trim it up so I will actually in permanent marker write place on fold so I just transfer anything that I need to transfer and then I'll just put a couple of arrows like so and then I'll put it at 130 um, percent what else and I might write down what I need so um, exterior fabric uh, fusible fleece and lining and just times one okay so I know that that's what I've got to cut and I can even put cut above it okay so now I know that that's what I've got to cut it's all written there and I don't need to stress about that so now that I know that this is all pieced together correctly I just take my paper scissors and on this dark line here on the outside I actually just trim on the outside of that just like so and get rid of all this excess and that's why I've transferred that place on the fold to the inside because we're going to actually just cut on the outside of the dotted line here and you can see that that's actually going to be discarded now so you know you need to have oops you need to have that information on there all right so I'm going to continue doing that and then we're going to move on to our uh, pockets okay so that's all cut out and now we're going to move out onto our pocket now you're going to do exact I'm not going to worry about showing you what to do because you do exactly the same thing to create your rectangle so you can see here that we have that cross in the center there and all our pieces are laid on there and the words are legible so you want to make sure that that is legible now at the at the point in time because we've enlarged it none of this information here is relevant anymore but you do want to cut um, and for me I usually cut this out I, I use the exterior fabric for this and also some fusible fleece and also some shape flex 101 so again you transfer that information on there if you don't want to stick this together the measurements you need are six and a half inches um, across the short ends and then it's 10 and 3 8 across the long end and you can just cut a rectangle so you don't necessarily need the template for that alrighty so now what we're going to do is we're going to get stuck into our cutting out of our fabric so the first thing that you want to do is you want to actually cut out with this template here so you're going to set aside your rectangle and as you can see I've already cut out my exterior fabric okay and it just fits on there I've just cut it on the fold and I've also ironed my fusible fleece onto that already so you can see there that that is on there and it's ready to go and I've cut that out and I've put my fusible fleece on there as well alrighty and I've also done my lining piece as well so all you're doing is basically just taking your your fabric um, on the fold and if you've cut 40 centimeters the width of fabric you just go up to where it's already folded and you just place that on like so and then you just cut around it alrighty and now I've also cut um, some other pieces that we're going to need today so you can just set them aside for just the moment okay and I just want to talk about our pockets that we're going to create now we're also adding a zipper in today as well so you're going to need to cut some zipper tabs and I usually cut these at um, about two and a half inches by three inches in length and I'll cut two of those and then you've got your, as I said you've got your template and this is where I like to use the template uh, especially when I'm doing the larger ones because I, I still have it there even though I just cut the rectangle for the pockets which I've done here and I have put on one of them I have put um, shape flex 101 as well as fusible fleece and I've also put fusible fleece on this one okay that just um, that just gives it a little bit more body in the center because we're getting bigger in the bag and the nature of the bag is for it to come down on itself so we need to stabilize that a little bit better so I've cut them and fused all, all the interfacings on there to the template 
but because we're actually adding a zipper pocket we actually have to cut a little bit extra fabric today so all I do is I basically just fold my template in half and then place it on the fabric and I cut the pockets the the lining part of my pocket um, at half of the template and that makes a perfect size for the zipper pocket because what will happen is when we assemble the pocket and go to assemble the bag this bottom edge will get caught up in the bit that we sew okay so we're now ready to start assembling our bag so we'll set these pieces aside for just now just the moment okay so we've set all those pieces aside now what I want you to do is grab your exterior fabric and your lining fabric okay so before we start putting it together we need to put our magnetic snap in so basically what you're going to do is we're going to put the magnetic snap in and what we need to do is find the center mark so we do that by folding it in half aligning up our raw edges and this is on the lining part first okay and we pop that like so I and mean, you can see here we've got our center mark so now what we're going to do is we're going to measure down one and three eighths so there's one three it's about there okay and we're just going to make a dot then we're going to grab one of our little washers that come with our magnetic snap and we're just going to place the hole of the magnetic snap in the center there on that dot and then we're just going to make two little marks just like so then we're going to grab our uh, quick unpick and just to stop you from going too far grab yourself a pin and at the top of those lines just place the pin in there and what will happen is when we go to cut it you won't actually go past that if you've got some really sharp snips like I do here you can actually just snip that like so if not just use your quick unpick and make sure that that pins in there and that will stop you from ripping too far okay now we have a small piece of peltex as well that we're using on this and that will help secure it a little bit more about an inch square of the peltex that we need and i'm just going to separate my magnetic snaps and you can see here we've got a male part and a female part now i want the male part to go on the the lining so i'm going to turn it over and on the right side of the fabric I'm going to insert the prongs into those little cuts that we just made so just like so then we're going to go to our washer and our Peltex and I'm just going to put a couple little marks on that as well with my scissors just like so and then I'm going to pop that down over the prongs as well and then I'm just going to place that washer on there and then I'm going to push my magnetic snap prongs out to the side just like that and that's the, the male part installed now we want to get our exterior fabric we're going to add the other part of our magnetic snap onto that all right so same as we did last time we're just going to fold that in half find our halfway point and then we're going to measure about one and three eighths up so that's one and three eighths I'm going to put a little circle there grab my washer place the washer over that dot that I made and then make the two marks of where my slits have got to go so again I just grab my scissors or my quick unpick put the pin in if you use your quick unpick you're pretty much all right if you're using your tips of your scissors because you're just going to cut on that line making sure that you go through the fabric as well so you want to make sure that your scissors are actually being able to go through that then what you're going to do is you're going to flip it over and you're going to put the female part of your snap in and you're going to get some peltex about an inch in size there's no rhyme or wrong reason for that that one uh, just basically make a couple of snips in it you're going to place that over the prongs just like so and then you'll place your washer on and you'll do exactly the same as what you did with your lining so you'll just squash that out and there we go so now that we've got our magnetic snaps in we can move on to the assembly of the outer of the bag 
Alrighty, so what we're going to do now is we're just going to roll our bottom edge up. So we've got the, the closure part up here and this is what I'm referring to as the bottom edge. So what we're going to do is we're just going to fold that bottom edge up underneath our flap there. So if our flap was to close over, that's what it would look like. And we're just going to give that a bit of a finger press there. And then I'm going to open that back up and I can see that crease there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to just get my ruler and my marking device and I'm just going to, making sure that I'm inside this flap, I'm just going to make a mark and like I do every other time just so I know that I don't go past those marks, I just do that. Then I'm going to grab my little thread snips and these are... Um, these particular ones, I love using these. They are the Kai 7 uh, 100 series. They're a brilliant scissor. Uh, perfect. I got the set for um, $69 and I'll leave a link down below where you can get the supplies for this particular project. But these, great, these scissors, they, they've got a really nice tip on them and they make it super easy just to nick into your fabric. As you can see, just clipped it straight away and we're through. And then I can just get my bigger ones and finish off the job or i could use the small ones they're just as sharp okay so i've used those and i've set them aside now what i'm going to do is i'm going to place my pieces together now i'm going to line up all my raw edges and then i'm going to grab some uh, wonder clips or pins i prefer to use wonder clips and i just place some wonder clips and making sure that everything is aligning up just nicely on my raw edges or my curves and everything and just like we've done in previous videos for the accordion pouch hack we're going to use the hacks that we used in our first video and that is basically sew all the way around okay so we've sewn all the way around and now what i'm going to do is i'm going to grab my pinking shears my trusty pinking shears i love doing this it saves me having to snip into the uh, curves but if you don't have uh, any pinking shears all you need to do is just grab a pair of sharp scissors and you just want to make little nicks all the way around now that helps your curves turn out makes it a little bit more of a nicer finish so basically all we're going to do now is pink those and I also just where the um, the flap comes over I just like to basically just snip in towards those threads there not all the way to the threads just before them and that just makes it a little bit easier to turn it out alrighty so grab your pinking shears or your scissors and just go around all your curves I personally just go all the way around it just saves me having to worry about it and I know that everything is sitting nice and um, equal on the inside as well okay so we've done that and now what we're going to do is we're just going to reach in and we're going to turn that right way out okay so we have sewn all that together we've put our magnetic snap in and we've also top stitched that down so now what we can do is just set this aside okay so now what we're up to is the zipper installation and in the past we've not had a zipper in it but what we're going to do is we're going to put a zipper pocket just here so this is one that's at 100 percent we've obviously enlarged this one so now we're going to put it just in here so basically these are the outside pieces that you would normally cut for the accordion pouch if you're not putting a zip in but we need to also have some lining as well as well as a zip and some zipper tabs so basically what you're going to do is just set these aside for a moment and we're just going to work with these pieces here now you've got a short and a long edge and we're going to be installing the zipper in the long edge so what you need to do is the first thing that you need to do is basically you need to mark in three eighths of an inch from each side just like so and what's going to happen is our zipper is going to sit within those marks okay we're also got our zipper tab here which we need to create as well so we do that by just simply folding it in lengthways and then folding folding those raw edges in and giving it a press and it'll look like this okay so that's our zipper tab and what we need to do now is we need to actually cut our zipper down to five inches so to do that all I'm going to do is I'm going to take off this metal stop out of the way and then I'm going to measure five inches along my zip 
and I'm just going to place a little mark. Then I'm going to continue that mark all the way down. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my zipper pull and I'm going to pull it to the other side of that mark. Not going too far so I take it all the way off, just below that. Then I'm going to grab a pin and then I'm just going to do a little bit of weaving with my pin here and into the zip. And that's just what that's going to do is just bring those teeth in a little bit closer. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stitch a couple of stitches on my sewing machine along that line and that's going to just create a stopper and if you're real nervous you can do it on the other end as well and then that way you won't have any chance of getting your pull off your zipper tape okay so I've done that I can remove that pin and now I've created a temporary stop so what I can do is actually just get rid of that excess tape and now I'm ready to Put my tab on so all I'm going to do is basically pop that into the zipper tab that I created grab a wonder clip and hold that in place and then I'm just going to bring this around just like so and pop that in there and then pop a wonder clip on it as well and then what I'm going to do is head over to the sewing machine and using an eighth of an inch top seam allowance, I'm just going to top stitch that into place. Okay, so now that I've top stitched that in place, I'm just going to cut my zipper tab in half and that releases the, the zip. And then I'm just going to trim up against the um, zipper tape and then we'll be ready to start assembling our zipper pocket. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take our uh, pocket lining and as we did before, we're going to just double check that we've marked in three eighths of an inch from each side and that's where we're going to sit our zipper. So find the center of this, of your pocket. Just make a mark there. And then do the same with your zipper, find the center of that. At this point you can just close your zipper. And then place that on there like so. Then you're just going to grab yourself a pin and hold those together in place. Then you're going to get the outside of your pocket. And you're going to place that wrong side down. And then you're just going to pin all three layers, aligning all your raw edges together and making sure that they're all aligning before you sew. Add on your zipper foot onto your machine and then stitch along accordingly. Okay, so we've stitched that down. Get rid of any threads that it might be in the way. And then what you're going to do is you're just going to flip that over and you're just going to give that a really good press and get ready for top stitching and now what you're going to do is you're going to get your other piece and you're going to line your zipper up like so and your zipper pull is up and facing to the right and then you're going to get your other piece of exterior fabric and you're going to lay that right sides together then you'll pin that into place or use your wonder clips or wonder tape whatever you like to use for zippers and then again just sew that into place okay so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to push these out of the way this is your lining this is what your pockets going to be uh, made from so I'm going to now head over to my sewing machine enlarge my top stitch um, length two or three and I'm just going to top stitch this using an eighth of an inch seam allowance and that's just going to keep that lining away from the zip when we're using it okay so that is now sewn into place and it's all top stitch get rid of any long threads that might be in the way and now we're going to assemble our back the inner pocket so what you need to do is basically open your zipper up because that's where we're going to turn it out from we're going to bring up our fabrics together and you're going to want to make sure that your um that your seams here are going towards the exterior fabric okay so i just use a wonder clip here because it's quite thick 
and I make sure that the other side is doing the same thing as well and just match those up and then just align all my raw edges together okay so now that that's all in place what we're going to do is we're going to start on one side and we're going to use a quarter inch seam allowance and we are going to stitch down here along the bottom edge and then up we're going to leave this top edge open so we can turn it through okay now when you come to your seams just be taking it really slow so you don't end up making a crooked seam or anything like that you just want to come down nice and slow and um, just take it easy over that bulk don't forget to reverse at the beginning and at the end okay so now what we need to do is we're just going to trim out our corners a little bit so we'll just snip those edges off there you can see that we've stitched that all into place and then we will turn that through the right way get rid of all your rubbish and now what you're going to do is you're going to put your hand in reach right in for your corners and you're going to bring that back out poked out each corner what you're going to do is give that a really good press make sure that everything is sitting where it needs to sit roll your seams you can see here that our um, little tabs are in place and they look really good and you just want to make sure that everything is sitting nice and flat on the inside so push that pocket right down and when you're giving it a press give it a really good press to make sure that it's not going to get caught up on your zip or anything like that you can see there that our little pocket has come together okay so now what we've got in is our magnetic snap we've assembled our outside we've now inserted our zipper and created our internal pockets so now what we're up to is the final assembly so at this point you can just close your zipper it doesn't need to be open or anything like that so it now we assemble exactly how we've assembled every other pouch so the first thing we want to do is we want to grab our template and on our template are some marks so what we're going to do is we're just going to make those marks I find it easier just to use your chalk marker for this or a pen that can especially on dark fabric it makes it a little bit hard to see so you just want to make sure that you can see that okay and then I'm just going to turn that around and do the same thing again okay so you can see that those marks are there okay so the next thing that we need to do is find the center of our pocket so just folding that in half just grabbing your marking device and just placing a mark in those creases and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to line my ruler up with each of those marks and I'm just going to put a couple of marks in the center okay and then what I'm going to do is just set my exterior away for a second and I'm going to line my half inch mark on my ruler up with that dash line that I just made and then what I'm going to do about an eighth of an inch out I'm going to just draw a line to the other side and stopping an eighth of an inch before the edge and then I'm going to do the same thing on this side of the ruler And then I will just join those edges and I've created a box. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my exterior part of my purse back and I'm going to lay this in the center of the flap so you can see here that it's it's aligning up quite nicely and this is aligning up down the, the bottom edge here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fold this back and make sure that my cut mark with my finger on that dotted line that I did because that's the center of my box I can see that when I stitch on this line here that that cut mark that we made to turn it in is going to be hidden alright so now that I'm happy with the placement of that I'm just going to grab a couple of flat pins and I'm just going to pin this in place now before I get too excited and sew it down I just want to make sure that I can feel the pocket on the inside inside this line here and my, I can feel that it comes down to here 
So I know when I sew this, it's going to close up the bottom of that pocket. So you just want to make sure before you sew it that you've actually pushed that pocket down and it's actually laying flat in there. So just to make sure, I'm going to double check it. So I'll put a pin on this side and that's going to hold that into place. And then I'm just going to, and I know that it's not going to move now. I'm just going to open that pocket up and just make sure that those bottom edges are all pushed down under that line. So I can feel there that that's where my finger is and that's where the end of the pocket is. So I'm definitely safe now to sew that together. just putting a pin at the top part as well and that'll just stop it from moving around at this point you do actually want to lengthen your stitch length to a three because we are going through some thickness here so starting in the corner stitching on that line and just creating the box and then our little pocket is attached okay so you can see there that that is all now secured in place what I'm going to do first though is I'm just going to take that bottom flap and fold that out of the way and then I'm just going to top stitch this across here again lengthening my stitch length so as we are going through some thickness and then we'll be ready to put our sides on okay so that's all in place now and now we're ready to these marks here are going to align up with the sections on this side here and this side here so you want to grab your glue and I use the ultimate glue it's a non-toxic it's water-based it's a super strong glue I use it for um, a lot of my purse making and you can find that listed on our website and I've got a link down below where you can get all the stuff that I've used today all right so now what we're going to do is we're going to add some rivets now as I said earlier in the video you're going to need to double caps and these are about nine millimeters that I use you can use a 10 millimeter and then basically all we're going to do we're going to come down about half an inch to three quarters of an inch it's about half an inch and then we're going to come in about half an inch from the edge as well and then what we're going to do is we're just going to make a little mark making sure that everything is in its place then we're just going to get our tailors all or you can use this um, this is a, a leather belt hole punch they work as well so making sure that it's all wrapped around and then with if you've got a tailors all or with your punch from your um, leather kit just make a hole now you may, after you've used the, the leather hole, the belt punch, you might have to get your tailors all and put that through there anyway, just to make sure that it's clear. And then we just get one of our rivets and we pop that through until it comes out the other side. So you can see there it's just coming out. And then what we do is we just grab our rivet and we'll pop that on. Now at this stage, if you buy rivets, you'll come with a it'll come with a little uh, rivet setting tool. I actually have a rivet press that I'm going to use, and you don't necessarily have to put the rivets in. You can just sew down here, down each side, or you can just use the glue. But you can see there that that's holding that in quite nicely, and I'm going to repeat the same thing here so half inch down and half inch in and again I just get my punch take my tailors all push that through to make sure that the where it's got to go is clear then take my rivet pop that through give it a bit of a wiggle until it comes out the other side now this side here where the zip is is going to be a little bit more snug than this side so just be aware of that now as I said I'm not putting a rivet in, in the front but you can if you want to if you want that decorative look you can I'm not going to worry about that today and then I'm just going to do exactly the same on the other side now I have links down below of every all the places that I get my supplies from so I'll have it all in one spot you can go there and you'll be able to find rivets that you need with the setting tools and also the glue um, these specialized tools will be in that kit list as well and then it's just one one stop and you can get everything that you need okay so I'm gonna go and grab my rivet setter 
but I'm liking where they're all sitting right now and I know that I can set them in place and I know that that's not going to come apart at all the glue's not going to give out nothing's going to give out it'll be just nice and fine and it'll stay there and as I said if you want to you can put a couple of rivets there and that'll hold that in place as well just for a decorative thing okay so now I've got my rivet press and I'm going to basically what I'm going to do is just set my rivets so I always just grab a scrap piece of fabric just a square piece will do rectangle doesn't matter just a scrap piece and this is just to protect it doesn't have to be overly big either okay so I've just got a piece of scrap fabric and what I like to do is I just wrap that around and you can still feel the rivet underneath there so moving all the the fabric and everything out away from the remaining of the purse I basically just put that in there and you'll feel it sit inside its little slot that it needs to especially on the press and it's the same for the the um, hammer punch one as well so basically all you're going to do is now press the handle and that's going to sit in place and then you'll just squash that down and that is it it's set in place now you don't want to be too hard with it because um, you can actually damage them if you're not careful and you just give it a, a light press so that move then so before I go to do it come down and just clamp it you can see there that they just go in quite nicely and I'm going to repeat that all the way around and then we're done as I said the links down below actually do come with a ri for the rivets they actually do come with a setting tool so you don't need to have one of these big contraptions and okay there we go our rivets are all set in place our little purse is all finished and it is a great size clutch um, to take out for coffee or something along those lines you've just got it there and you can see it's not exactly a small clutch and it's not overly big either so in comparison wise there is our 100 percent so that's the size that Chevy Fabrics had it at and this is the large one which is at 130 percent and then we've got our little book, little tiny one that we did last month which is our mini one for our wonder clips so next month we'll be working on um, adding a twist lock so something different again we'll use rivets again we'll make it slightly larger and we'll add a wristlet to that one and some credit card slots okay so thank you very much for joining me today I really do hope that you enjoyed the hacks that I did on this little pouch it's really starting to become something else now and not just a humble accordion pouch if you like this video today give us a thumbs up down below hit that subscribe button and the little bell icon beside it and as always we love to hear from you so please leave us a comment below and tell us what you thought and for those that don't know my name's Nicole Reed for Divine Lee Design Studio and I'll see you all again next time bye for now